Hello, everyone, and welcome to week four FanDuel defenses. Just wanted to throw a little plug out there before we get going. Uh, if you like these videos and you like what we're doing here, give us a like on this video and subscribe to our channel. Uh, now that that painful advertisement is out of the way, we can get to some, some awesome information that Jason provided for us. Just like a Thanksgiving dinner in the 1700s, whenever Thanksgiving happened, you know, whenever that cartoon turkey like became a thing and corn and stuff that's your lead in that's what you're getting that's that's, you're that's, getting. that's yeah. what i get oh that's, this is, that's this is a pain for yeah so how about you get yeah that was your lead into cash game defenses so let's thank you get. that was a great transition into what i'm yeah. talking about yeah because it has nothing thanksgiving or turkeys don't have anything to do with the no, broncos and nothing no nothing but uh, I'm looking to pay up this week. Uh, I think it's pretty easy to do that. Uh, Denver Broncos at 5,200. Going up against a Bucks team that um, we've seen the comparisons. I, I've seen a couple people say this is the last year's Jacksonville Jaguars, which I completely agree with. Um, Mike Evans, Charles Sims, Jameis Winston, certainly some talent there. Um, against this Broncos defense, especially the secondary, I am not expecting high things from them. Uh, right now, they're averaging close to three turnovers a game. Uh, this Broncos secondary, plus just their general rush in general, it's just phenomenal. 5200 just feels like a decent price, especially with all the value at, at wide receiver, running back, and tight end still. Um, it, I don't see really any other way of kind of just going Denver and cash. Yeah, and I mean, you're going to be fitting, you know, four bears in the cash game, so you got to pay up a defense. you got to spend that money. you got to spend them ducats somewhere. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, obviously, yeah. I mean, Broncos are a tremendous defense, and they have a good matchup against the quarterback who's going to throw literally pretty much every down. So uh, good things to come for that Broncos defense. Uh you get into the Houston Texans here. I wrote them as a DraftKings, you know, defense as well. What are you seeing here? Uh, I mean, obviously the Titans have less firepower uh, than the Bucks do. Obviously Houston's home. Uh, a couple hundred less. It's just 300 less. I, I do like Houston as well, uh, averaging three and 3.3 sacks per game. Obviously, you know, J.J. Watt's going to be a big part of that. Tennessee still turning over the ball uh, over two times per game. They've allowed the fourth most fantasy points to opposing defenses. This game flow just sets up perfectly um, for Houston to just dominate this game. I mean, Tennessee with a 17-team total so far um, in the week, minus seven favorites. I mean, I'm just looking at, at, at Tennessee and, and Mariota. It's just like he, there's no options for him to even try and rack up garbage time points. This this We like DeMarco Murray. I know he's been the only one really doing anything, but that's it. <laughs> that's really it. Jason, have you ever – are you are you from Tennessee? No, no, I'm not. Because you're the only ten I see. Oh Jesus, man! Come on, yeah. come on. Yeah, that happened. Uh, GPP defenses, Arizona Cardinals uh, playing the Rams. The Rams have been utterly pathetic. Uh, obviously, they did have some some nice plays against the Bucks last week, but this is not the Buccaneers defense. Uh, back at home after that weird Bills game, I expect Arizona to have some some nice takeaway options. Is that what you're looking at here? Yeah, I mean, I'm looking here as a swerve off of Seattle, a swerve off of Houston, a swerve off of Denver. Uh, we saw it was it was a weird week. Um, but 5,300 here, obviously, you can still pay up in on defense. Um, averaging nearly three takeaways per game. Obviously, we know the secondary can can really jump routes and get to them. And I think, actually, I think Arizona's offense is really going to bounce back. I mean, they're eight-point favorites. They're at home. Um, whenever the Rams' offense can't get going with Todd Gurley and can't really feed him the ball, we know what happens. Um, you're, you're forcing Keenum to throw to targets that just simply aren't that good. I know this might be painful for you to hear just being as a Rams fan, but uh, Arizona, I mean, that, that high upside we've seen already against Tampa, but um, I'm looking for that again this week. <laughs> Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Jason. I couldn't hear you. I had earplugs in. What was that? Just the Rams suck, Russ. Let's deal with oh. it. Oh, okay. Um, Redskins. Uh, anyway, uh, against the Browns here. Um, interesting choice. What, what do you see here? Well, obviously, it's basically only the Terrell Pryor show. 
I, I mean, that's what they're going to work around. Um, you're still dealing with limited quarterback play. Redskins are cheap, uh, 4,600 at home. Browns with a team total under 20. Uh, obviously, the loss of D'Angelo Hall hurts the secondary a little bit. I still don't think we've seen the best of this Washington defense. I still I still think they're really underperforming. Um, overall, you look at the Cleveland Browns, they have rank inside the top 10 in fantasy points allowed per game to defenses. Uh, I, I think the Redskins go out and kind of throw the ball pretty well and, and kind of get out to a big lead and kind of force the Browns to make some mistakes kind of coming from behind. So at 4,600, I think this is the value defense to really target uh, if you're going that route. Um, it, it is kind of a sore off because there is a lot of good pay-up options. Yeah, I like it. Uh, the Browns kind of, I won't say they underwhelmed with the Dolphins last week in terms of the Dolphins' defense, but uh, I think this could be the post, post-hype post sleeper. Uh, the Redskins, not a very good defense, but I think they could be the one that really takes advantage of this, this Browns team. Uh, you threw in the Jets here. I'm intrigued. Um, if Russell Wilson's out, I could certainly see, um, where you're headed there. Is that what you're thinking? So that's the thing. I mean, this really does hinge on Russell Wilson playing. Um, if he doesn't, I, I'm all about the Jets at 4,400 as a GPP play. Um, still an above average defense. Uh, Seahawks obviously going to the East Coast, which didn't really affect him too much last year. Russell Wilson and company really figured that out. Um, but if it's not him, um, I still just, I'm not a big fan of, of the weapons that, if there's a backup quarterback, how efficient can they really be? I feel like Wilson really makes everyone kind of thrive around him. Um, and you look, the Jets got absolutely crushed against Kansas City. Um, I think back at home against Seattle, there might be a little bounce back, not necessarily for the offense, but for the defense to, to come out and play with a little more fire. Um, Jets averaging three sacks per game. Uh, I still don't think the Seattle offensive line is, is all that great. I think average at best is where I would put them. Um, and I just think they're going to be incredibly low owned. And once again, that value 4,400, but it really does really hinge on, on Russell Wilson playing. I think, I think instead of fire there, you should have said vim and vigor. I think that would have been a better choice to describe the jets this week and how they're going to play motivated. You know what I'm saying, bro? I I don't think I'm ever going to say that. Oh, okay. All right. (laughs) (laughs) um so yeah i i definitely agree uh with with most of these if not all obviously wait wait on russell wilson's status um but a quick review broncos texans really the main main ones we're focused on this week correct yeah definitely good to hear all right folks well go start setting those lineups it is only tuesday but i mean you can definitely start throwing in some some rough ideas um as always you know check out daily fantasy cafe for all our cool tools content optimizers awesome people and such and uh we'll see you in week five